Hey guys, what's up? This is Robert Ness 816 and here we have yet another video about the Genesis. Ugh. Okay, so it's not a video about the Genesis. I, I, I lied. Sorry. Sorry. I know I've been doing a lot of videos about the Genesis. It's a video about this really cool new thing that I got here that I've waited eight fucking months for. Oh my god. So, what this is is a backup RAM cartridge, but it's not an old one, it's a new one. And you guys are like, what? Who the hell's making up a brand new backup RAM cartridge for the Sega Genesis? Well, one person is DB Electronics. So, this thing is basically half the price of an original backup RAM cart, and it has about eight times the storage capacity of the original. So, this one has uh, 8100 I'm sorry if I can focus that better here, so maybe you guys can see that. There we go, I think you can see that. 8,189 blocks of memory. I think the original backup RAM cartridge had about 1,500 maybe, something like that. Maybe 2,000 blocks of memory. I don't really know, so it would be about six times the storage, I, I would I think. Um, but anyways, yeah, so this thing costs, I believe, $36.00. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm actually going to put a link to this thing um, in the uh, in the video. But um, so for that price, though, you're getting basically two advantages: more storage capacity, a brand new device, and the second advantage, even though I added a third one in there, is actually that the battery in this thing is replaceable. So later on in the video, I'll show you the insides of this thing and how it works, and uh, we'll see that uh, changeable battery here. Um, so like the original RAM cartridge had a battery that was soldered in place, this one has a battery that is basically um, kept in place with a little holder, so that's really cool. So looking over the device here, you can see that it does come with a very nice high quality label here. Um, I would say the quality in this is about as good as the original Genesis labels were, maybe even better because you know the original ones had uh, issues with the um, glue bleeding through over time. Um, but the cartridge design is very nice. It has this little notch here, which I have no idea what that's for. Um, the back of the cartridge is nice. It has these little screws here, which are kind of neat though, uh, meaning you don't need any special tools to open it up when it does come time to uh, change out the, um, the battery. Um, and other than that, it's a nice product. So, the test that I always like to use here is how well does it fit inside of a Genesis console or anything. So, uh, if any of you guys have ever purchased any aftermarket products um, like these uh, reproduction games, um, most of the time these games in particular turned out to be complete crap. But this uh, particular um, product here from DB Electronics fits inside of the Genesis just like a regular cartridge would although with one of my Genesis consoles and it happens to be one that's practically new has an issue with a very tight fit. Um, I'm not sure why that is but yeah it's just with the um, with, with this that I have that issue with. Kind of weird. So anyways we're gonna put Warlock in and you'll basically see how that goes in. Pretty easy. Comes out easy enough too. We'll put in Musha, cheap uh, repro here with actually, and this is getting off topic here, probably the best looking uh, cartridge design I've ever seen in my life. That is like a legit Sega cartridge. No broken English on it or anything. Look at that. I believe this is uh, almost from a real Genesis mold maybe, or a um, you know, Genesis cartridge mold. That's amazing. The label on this thing is really good too. Just the board inside of it's a piece of crap, so whatever. I'm actually going to make another video on this too. So I'll we'll put this copy of Musha in. Goes in uh, easy enough. We'll take it out. A little tight. And then the backup RAM cart. So there you go. They all fit in pretty easily. But like I said, this. Um, particular cartridge here is I don't know I think it's my Genesis that's touchy though but like I said I have one Genesis that's hardly been used and I think that could be the culprit maybe the pins need to loosen up but um, when I do use it on or when I do use uh, original Sega products on it I don't have any issue with the 
um, cartridge uh, being stiff at all or anything like that so it could just be I'm not sure maybe there's a slight difference with the thickness on these boards at all but you know who knows um, so anyways yeah let's go inside of this product here and I'll show you guys uh, what makes it tick all right guys we're back and uh, just a little word of advice before you take apart anything it's always good to wash your hands so if you're the type of person that has very oily skin I really really recommend you wash your hands thoroughly before working on anything uh, mainly because the oils on your skin will leave fingerprints and those fingerprints will uh, tend to rust things after a while so um, especially with electronics you have a lot of exposed metal and stuff like that so yeah wash your hands so we're just going to use a regular Phillips head here. This is actually, I think it's a number one bit. I'm not really too sure, but it's kind of small. It's like an eyeglass screwdriver. And like anything, I always recommend using good tools, not shit ones there, because they do tend to strip out your um, screws after a while, making it very difficult to take things apart. So I'm showing you this just because it's kind of cool to see the inside of something. Um, especially something that you know if you're interested in buying it too I figured I might as well take you throughout the whole uh, shebang so very odd choice here to use machine screws on this cartridge I don't know why uh, he chose to do that but uh, whatever so taking the cartridge apart we are left with a red PCB and we will get a close-up of the actual product So there it is, and uh, I don't even know if I'm in focus or not, I feel like I am. So there's your, um, the basic board. So there's your battery holder here, you get a pretty beefy CR2450, which is actually freaking huge for a button cell. Um, so hopefully you will not need to replace this battery here for quite some time. But yeah, very neat little board layout. Um, as you can see, the electronics, um, you know, in, in 2016 have advanced to a point now where they are uh, much smaller than what they used to be. So I've never actually taken apart an original uh, backup RAM card, but I would uh, kind of imagine the uh, memory chips and it would be much larger than what these are. Um, and let's see, which one is the memory chip? I don't even know. Maybe this one is too. I really have no idea. But uh, yeah, I mean... You know, very nice things here. There's a little tantalum capacitor in there too, so pretty cool. Um, but yeah, good quality product here. So very nicely made. Very nice PCB. And uh, I feel like with this product, you're getting your money's worth. Uh, something I wish I did was take apart the FM Powerbase Mini, or the Mini Powerbase FM, however the hell you pronounce that. And so I could show you guys the PCB with that particular product. Um, unfortunately, I do not have it anymore, but yeah, this is uh, definitely a very um, nicely made product. So now I will show you um, the backup RAM cart working in the Sega CD. Alright guys, so before we show you guys the uh, backup RAM cart in action, um, I just wanted to show you guys how the uh, backup RAM cart fits in that Model 1 Genesis I was talking about. So with this particular console, and it's my only Genesis console where I have an issue with it, the RAM cartridge has a very tight fit and also um, my, um, what do you call it, reproduction uh, Genesis games do too. So I think it has something to do more with this console being, um, you know, just a, a hardly used example of the, uh, the Genesis. So. Um, I'll just basically show you guys this because who knows, maybe you guys might have a console that's new too, or if you have one um, that already has a tight cartridge slot, maybe you'll have a similar experience. Uh, I really don't know. Um, yeah, so, you know, just something else I figured I'd throw in a review here and just, you know, to let you guys know what's uh, everything least that I found out with this over the last month and a half that I've had it. So I figured I'll get this on video and show you guys, um, you know, just what might happen with your console um, if you have a tight fit with it. So I get to push down a little bit harder than usual. I mean, it's not super tight, but you know, it is tighter than what I'd like. Um, and then as far as removing it goes, um, I'm trying to do this one handed on like a ridiculous angle, but 
as you can see, I kind of have to use both hands there. But yeah, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to remove and take out. And I showed you from a stupid angle, but um, you know, it's it could be easier. Let's just put it that way. My other consoles, they like as you've seen, it was much easier to uh, insert and remove. Um, all right, so let's uh, show you guys the uh, backup RAM cartridge in action. All right, so switching on the Genesis and Sega CD console. So in order to access the uh, menu here, you're going to push start on a controller. So and now we'll go down to the options menu. We'll push either A, B, or C. And at the bottom of the screen, you will see how many items we have. So the cartridge memory has 8,155 blocks remaining. Um, I have six things saved in it. And the onboard memory has 96 blocks remaining. And I have four items saved in it. So I can push any button, get out of that. And then here on this menu, it will give you the uh, option to um, either copy from the RAM cart to the Sega CD, copy to the Sega CD to the RAM cart, erase something from the RAM cart, erase something from the Sega CD, format the RAM cart, or format the Sega CD. Both are things you probably don't want to do, um, unless, of course, you replace the save battery in either one of these two, but uh, shouldn't need to do that. So that's pretty much it. So I mean, we can go to copy from the RAM cart to the Sega CD. So I'll push uh, B for that. And here it actually gives you a rundown of everything that you have saved. So I have my save file for Sonic CD, uh, save file for Jaguar. Uh, was that Jaguar XJ? Um, I have a bunch of save files here for Road Rash. So. With Road Rash here, it's very important that you actually save the config file and then one, two, and three here, these two or three files down here are actually your uh, save state in the game. So I actually opted not to save my first and second files to the Sega CD because my second save file here, a third one rather, is the uh, most recent. Uh, so we can, uh, I think, hit B or start to get out of this since I already have it saved. Item with the same name already exists. Yeah, so it's not going to do that. So at least it's smart enough to know that. So anyways, that's pretty much it, guys. All right, guys. So we're here with the Model 2 Sega CD. So I figured I'd show you um, how to access the RAM card on both the Model 1 and Model 2 Sega CDs. So pretty much all you need is the backup RAM card, only this time you also need a game. Kind of a pain in the ass, but yeah, I don't know. It's the way Sega did it. So let's do this now. Let's set it up. The backup RAM card. Take it. Put it into your Genesis. Power it on. So let's aim the camera upwards now. And there we go. So this one, the process is a little bit more involved. It's not as easy. I mean, it's easy, but whatever. Another step. So you're going to push the start button. That'll bring you to the Sega CD screen there. So you have your menu. And in order to access the uh, RAM cartridge and also the backup memory on the Model 2, you need to insert a game. So we'll go to that one right now. So push the eject button, put a game in, anything, wherever you want, there you go. Alright, so it's going to see the game and then you'll see the menu will pop up, which it actually has. So originally this just said Sega, but when you put a game in it'll say CD-ROM memory. So what you want to do is select memory. and now it's showing you what you have left. So as you can see, the uh, internal memory has four items saved with 96 blocks of memory. The saved items on the backup RAM cart has 8,155 blocks of memory left with six saved items. And basically, it's the same thing as before. 
nothing has really changed between the Model 1 and Model 2 Sega CDs as far as um, accessing the, uh, you know, the, the RAM cartridge or the internal memory. Um, hopefully it's not coming out too overexposed, although I have a feeling it is. So basically the same thing. Copy to RAM card to the Sega CD, copy from the Sega CD to the RAM card, erase everything or erase something on the RAM card, erase something on the Sega CD, format the RAM card, format the Sega CD. Basically the same. And if we click on copy from the RAM card to the Sega CD, you can see that it has all the same things. Um, well, I can see it, you can't see it. But the top one, again, is the Sonic CD, Jaguar XJ, Road Rash config file, Road Rash 1, Road Rash 2, and Road Rash 3. So if I try to copy it again, it won't let me, because it's already on there. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the backup RAM cartridge in a nutshell for the Sega CD. And uh, I do hope that you guys found this review helpful. If you did, give me a like, subscribe, comment, rate this video, do whatever you want to do. And uh, yeah, tell me what you guys think. Thanks for watching.